Hello friends, welcome to Channel Reza Blade. I'm your loquacious, trivia-loving, and friendly neighborhood Reza. This video has become part two of my rather exhaustive reverse stamping tutorial. I'm about to show you how to paint gradients onto your reverse stamping to make it really special, like so, in these little reverse stamped Polaroids from the Manny by Me box for me. Um, Please give this video the old thumbs up and please leave a comment below to tell me what you think about these or what you'd like to see from me next. You'll also want to make sure you're subscribed and getting notifications for my new releases, so click that bell. Okay, it's time for me to cut the fuss and drive this bus. Enjoy! We're going to go ahead and use the blues. Now what I have done... Yeah, I'm going to dump these out. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna use essentially the same blues that I used here before, right? Ooh, very important, very important. If I had screwed that up, I don't know that I would have been able to fix this. All right, here, this is important before you fill it in. We are, we're, we're basically just doing, let's do nail art with Reza. This isn't as formal as a tutorial, I guess. I'm just trying to make sure that you can see, but I can't look at this through the camera or I won't get the line straight. All right. Maybe that will help you watch me. All right. So I noticed my, uh, my brush was curving the wrong way. I would feel so much comfort more comfortable doing this without my bare hands, but I have nail glue all over my nails and you're all going to go crazy. Well, not literally. I'm sure you would actually be very nice to me. There is a reason I call you my friends, because you are my friends. All right. We're almost there, guys. Sorry. All right. So that obviously has to dry for a second before we can interfere with it at all. So I'm going to take the opportunity and maybe you'll be able to see some of the things I do. I know I've pointed this out a lot. I rest my pinky down on my hand that's at the bottom of this little stack of pancakes we have going on here for nail art. So my left hand is touching the table and then my finger is balancing against my thumb. As I move the brush, I'm holding my pinky finger against my thumb. And I can uh, try to do this black by hand to change things, but I'm really only doing this for the demonstration, this part of it anyway. So I might as well just do it the way that I would. Oops. Here I go. And one thing about the longer your brush stays down on your stamp, the smoother your line is going to be. So even if you can probably see I'm trembling just a little bit, but even if you don't have a perfect stillness to your hand, just do your best. Um, when I used to do, um, sharpshooting or shooting or whatever, target shooting. That's what I mean, target shooting. Um, and I used to do tar target shooting. I used to breathe out before I would take my shot for, on the target. Same kind of principle. You want to breathe out if you're doing something super intricate. Don't be breathing up and down and up and down when while you're painting. Breathe out. Do your action. Don't kill yourself by holding your breath too long. Just take it in stages, take it in strides. You can do this. If you're very advanced and you don't like the tone I'm taking, I'm sorry. I just want everybody to be able to do these things that I do. So um, now we're going to go ahead and put together. We're going to let that dry. So we're going to put together our gradient. Okay. It's all just a general process here. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep 
the kind of outline of what I had done on there previously because as I mentioned if you're putting wet polish on top of dry polish in a container that you're using you are going to pick up some of that color. I have had beautiful whites that turned into vibrant pinks before because I didn't see that there was red polish on this little red uh, diet Dr. Pepper lid. Okay so I've done everything but the lightest of the blues. This is a good sky, okay? I really do like this sky. I, I was shopping through my stamping polishes just because they're right here to the left of me and my nail polish is far away down the hallway. All right, so we're gonna go for it, okay? First thing I'm doing, I'm putting down one stripe of the, normally I don't actually put polishes out because it's a waste of polish. I usually take from the wand, but this process is, in, in fact, I really, I need bigger drops. It's just going to dry when it's like this. And what we're doing, let me give you a little spoiler so that I can talk to you while I dab. I'm dabbing again in my video. I keep talking about dabbing. All right, so I'm putting a little bit more here. We're going to blend this so that it's five colors instead of three because I already did that didn't I okay let me get just a little bit more of this and then we're in business and then we're cooking with Crisco is that the same there's an idiom there I don't know it all right so we're gonna swirly swirly this is colorful swirly all right so if you see we're turning what was three colors into five colors and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of grab this in between, keep my application of it kind of constant. I'm grabbing a little here because it looks like it's pretty dark and I'm kind of rubbing against here. Okay. So that helps achieve the gradient. I'm not going to show you the front yet, but I will in just a second because it really does show you. I went a bit lighter here. So you can see this isn't going to really help you blend if you haven't been swirling this whole time or if you have waited in between the applications. Let's see if I'm getting a blend. I'm getting a little bit of a blend. All right, so now I'm going to take the lighter color. I'm wiping off my paintbrush. I'm going to take the lighter color here and kind of Swirl it in, swirl it in. I'm going to let you watch me work. All right. And then the secret with the bottom one, the color of the most purest, whitest. Okay. The other one, the bottom one and the top one are the two that don't get swirled in because you want it to look like your gradient is, whoops, what am I doing here? You want to make sure your gradient really goes through the colors that you want it to. If you mark in effective permanent marker, painting wise, um, if you mark your gradient with the lightest color and the darkest color, there you go. And that is why I painted that in. You see how I accidentally slopped some paint right there, but because I had already painted that back in, then we're safe. And here is what you just watched me do. I hope you like that. We're going to come back and we're going to do it again. We're going to do it in purple, orange, and pink, hot pink. So um, thank you for watching me with that one, and we'll be back to do it again. Yes, we're back. That ought to do it. Um, I have left just a little bit left to be done so that I could talk to you about what I did. I just filled in the background with white so that I can put it down on any kind. White is like a Ziploc bag for your color, right? So when you're putting it down, it won't blend with the other color underneath it. Let's say it's a really dark purple that I'm putting it down. I don't want that purple to change any of the colors or how you see any of the colors. So a stamp will go on more vibrant if you just kind of get used to filling the back in with 
white, all right? So, and I'm just using my $1.99 Sinful Colors Snow Me White, all right? So now I'm gonna pick up this. Actually, nope, this is the one we're actually gonna be applying to the finger because it'll be ready. Gets one more coat. Well, once your white is sufficiently dried, okay? Well, gets one more coat of the clear coat. And this is to keep the texture even on the uh, nail. I like my clear coat to be about the size of the nail so that the texture that you won't have any bumpiness that you do have sometimes when you use reverse stamps with a couple of coats of clear on. All right, so this is white. I'm gonna put this aside, let it dry. I remain, I, there remains one step to do on the one that we're gonna paint with the Violet Sunset, all right? The thing to do is that I need to, if you look from here, um, part of that umbrella is in the shade, all right? So you're seeing it from the other side. So this is gonna be a little bit deeper because it's in the shade. Now, have you ever toned down a color or you've been told to tone down a color? Well, that literally means, um, again, another plug for my color theory video, but tone literally means to add a little bit of gray in. Now you want a neutral gray, not too hot or not too cool as far as your, does it lean red or blue? No, we actually want it to, or yellow, we want it to be kind of neutral here. Now this is a bit of a cool gray, but that's really okay. Um, this particular A uh, little bit of stamping, I mean, sorry, a little bit of coloring that I'm going to be doing. You don't need to overthink it. All right, so I, actually I'm going to use a smaller brush here. This is one of my set that I got from Manny by, nope, Maniology. All right, so I'm going to, normally I would use a toothpick to mix these, but I really am in a hurry because I have a sunset to make and we're already at half an hour here. Anyway, but this will be a great video for those of you, the ones who don't need the um, time stamps that I'm going to be giving in, giving out. All right, so clearly I didn't mix enough gray into it, but you know what I tried to do to show you. Another tip, uh, I know that I've told you this, but I can't tell you enough. With these good brushes that you have, they are not free. Um, once you put them in acetone to take off the uh, nail polish, put it in some water so that the acetone doesn't passively eat away at your nice bristles. All right, um, I think I told you everything except we're gonna talk about this right now. I used five total colors, three stamp colors. You see what I'm seeing? Polishes. I use three base polishes and I'm making five total colors to make my gradient. If this were longer, I would use maybe seven colors total. Or if it were much longer, maybe nine. You know, you want the size of the gradient. What degree is it gonna go from up to down? How many colors are you putting through your gradient? That'll be really what, um, what determines what you use. So we're gonna go ahead and make this gradient. It's gonna go orange at the base of the horizon and purple at the top. So once more, I'm going to start with that. That really looks so cool. I love this color combination. All right. So I firmly closed that up. I hope that is the last time I have to access that color. Okay. So first things first, I'm starting at the top. So I'm going to mix these two first. All right. So I need that pure color at the top and I should have taken everything off of my brush because I ruined things when I don't take the previous color off my brush. 
And again, you want this top line to be pure color. Gozer is listening so closely to me. I have a cat I sometimes talk about in my videos. Maybe eventually you guys will be able to see him. So here's my violet, okay? So now you're turning violet, violet. Okay, that was your random Willy Wonka quote of the day. All right. So we're just going to watch me do this for a minute. If I were just working on my own and not wanting it to be in the frame. So sometimes I'll pull over and I'll kind of make a, a custom mixture. Oops, I forgot to put, I, I was supposed to protect everything uh, with white and I did not. So I'm going to take this tiny thing. I just got stressed out because I could have changed that color by adding pink to that yellow. Again, we're sealing the color with that white layer, like a Ziploc. All right, I'm gonna clean this off later. I just put everything on this thing. Why didn't you guys tell me I was putting it down in a bad spot? <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to find a way to make it funny. But I do stuff like that all the time, so. All right, I'm gonna check out this color down here. I picked up a fuzzy. No, it's another reason to cover everything with white so you don't have to really be too careful. Although, watch out when your brush starts to get dry. Um, you can possibly pick up some color. It gets sticky. All right, so let me take this middle bit. You see where we are with this? I hope you like it. It's not as perfect as I would have maybe liked it, but the thing about gradients when you're swirling these colors around, they're so forgiving, kind of. And then I'll have the end, the edge of the sun set being kind of like this. And then I'll go back here to take another color. So hopefully I put everything in a place where you can see what's going on here. You want the grand reveal? Let's get there. What do you think? I hope you like it. Anyway, I really like these looks. I really like doing gradients within reverse stamps. I wanted to make sure that I taught you that. Now, uh, we're going to cover this once it dries. We're going to cover this in white. Make sure there aren't any too big holes. Okay, so we would cover this in white. We'd let it dry. We'd put another coat of wet and wild clear coat on it. Unless this is your whole nail and then you don't have to worry about the texture or really, or sealing it in. And then we put it aside. So, um... I'm going to tilt it this way, maybe just straight across. I should have colored in these little guys um, because I had forgotten that I put the leaves within the design. We're going to take our generic sticky base coat today. I'm running out of my nevermind one, so I'm cheating on it. <laughs> it feels so wrong. All right. So there's the base coat. The more sticky base coat you put on, of course, the longer you're gonna have to wait for it to get tacky. So I'm gonna take a moment with it on my own, alone. Gave it a little wind kiss. And I'm gonna go ahead and try this. All right, now sometimes you'll find things that are larger, thicker, just, you know, when it's almost the whole nail, the reverse stamp. Sometimes you'll find it kind of crinkle. I didn't really get that much, but just a little bit of warmth of your finger can kind of even it out if you get a crinkle. If the crinkle that you achieve is particularly impressive, then you might have to use just a tiny bit of acetone on a paintbrush or fine nail brush, whatever, um, to even it out with the texture 
of the nail. So I hope you have enjoyed today's lesson. I know that it was longer than anticipated, but I've heard you don't mind it when I tell you how to do things, give you tips and tricks, etc. There's no eck at the top of the etc. And I'm rambling. Oh, I did. I had one thing on my list that I didn't, you know, I use, sometimes I use a label cutter from Lantern and Wren. Sometimes I use little embroidery scissors. Today we're going to be super lazy, which is something we can do when we pre-mark our press-on nails. I don't mind that about not being able to use my natural nails for, well, anything. Anyway, I'm not bitter. I'm just, your nails are jewels, not tools. I do remember that. Don't worry, guys. I know. Anyway. So I just very gently even up those little acetone crispies, fringies. Sometimes I have to melt something to the nail polish. Just be gentle. Anything that you do with your brush, you can't undo. You'd rather maybe do it gently first. All right, so I rinse that off. That's fine. Now I put my top coat on, which is actually from Nevermind. And that is Swift, which is a quick try top coat. Now this is one because of the Polaroid that I would do in definitely in uh, glossy. Some looks suit themselves well to matte but I don't think this is one that does. Anyway, this will be on the movie poster. I mean, <laughs> video thumbnail. <laughs> so uh, if you clicked on this video and this is what you were looking for and you watched it, you enjoyed it, please tell me. I live for your comments. Like, I, they really, really help me know if I'm doing okay. Um, and then I'm gonna apply this one too. But I hope, I hope you had fun with me. And now you can make gradients in your reverse stamping. And that's pretty flashy. That's pretty awesome. I really like to do it. And I hope that you have fun. My next video is going to be the Manny by Me video. After that, we're doing a really cool uh, look at a couple new things from Hit the Bottle. And then the sky's the limit. Just uh, if you have specific things that you're looking for, do click below. Comment below, not click. <laughs> click all the things. All right, so uh, on my Instagram, you'll see stills of various things once I get to the Manny by Me video release. Did you hear Gozer? He is crying because I'm not paying attention to him, so I got a jet. You can do this. It's awesome. You're enough, and I love you. Bye.